Good morning, New Beginnings. It's me, Pastor Danish House. Today is Monday, January 24th, 2021. Thank you so much for joining me for this daily update and devotional video. I'm glad you decided to make me part of your life today, and I'm delighted that you are part of my life as well. Well, uh, yesterday was uh, Rachel and Carl Unterborg's anniversary, and I want to wish a happy birthday to Rachel and Carl. They are away on an anniversary trip. Uh, Rachel will be back in the office tomorrow. But today, for today, Rachel is, is not in the office. But happy anniversary, Rachel and Carl. We love you very much. We're glad you're part of this fellowship. And uh, we hope you have a wonderful anniversary. God blesses your marriage immeasurably. Uh, we, we love you and, uh, yeah, have a great time. Um, tonight at 7, there is an elder board meeting by Zoom. Elder board meeting by Zoom tonight at 7. Those are the events that are happening to in here in New Beginnings today. I'm going to be also buying a snow shovel today, apparently. Uh, that's one of, on my list. I've got a list of things to do here today that I need to get done. And buying a snow shovel is on that list. Uh, yesterday, I preached a sermon on uh, reawakening to the spirit of Christ, uh, Ephesians chapter 1, verses 13 through 21. I started off by talking about uh, verse 13, in him also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and were and believed in him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit. And I talked about how there's this chain of events that take place. You hear, you believe, uh, you are sealed and guaranteed, you acquire the inheritance uh, that you uh, is coming to you, and then it results in praise. And uh, acquiring the inheritance that is coming to you, that's you get a taster of that in this life, but it's it's primarily a, a resurrection event. Um, but let's so let's talk about this chain that leads from hearing the gospel to believing the gospel and being sealed by the Holy Spirit. Hearing, believing, and are sealed. Uh, one of the passages that I, a supporting passage that I alluded to in the sermon but did not directly quote is out of Romans 10, and it has a very similar chain of events. And it goes like this. How then will they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him of whom they've never heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? And how are they to preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. But they've not, obeyed, oh, they've not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed what he's heard from us. So faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. This passage follows a similar chain of events. It goes backwards through it, saying, starting with uh, uh, calling on the Lord for salvation, right, which is, uh, which is a, an element that is not in the other chain, calling on him. Uh, but before that comes believing. So when you believe, you call. Um, believing is in the chain of, of events in Ephesians chapter 1. So they, you, you call on him because you believe. You believe because you've heard the gospel. And that's another uh, element from the chain of events in Ephesians 1. You call on him in whom you've believed. You believe in him of whom you've heard. You hear because someone is preaching. Now here, we go uh, back a little bit beyond uh, before the chain of events in Ephesians chapter 1. In order for someone to hear the gospel, someone has to preach the gospel to them. And in order for someone to preach the gospel, they need to be sent. They need to be sent. Now, notice in verse 16, it says that not everyone has obeyed the gospel. Not everyone who hears the gospel believes and puts their trust in the Lord. Not everyone who hears the gospel calls on him. So not everyone uh, who hears the word automatically believes. But it says, so faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. Faith, that's where I alluded to on Sunday, faith does come through hearing. Hearing is, in some ways, the trigger of faith. And we talk about this anyways, by saying that um, faith is a gift that God gives to us. Um, that faith is a gift that God gives to us. Faith is not a work that we do on our own, but faith is a gift that God gives to us. And God gives that gift to us through the preaching of the gospel. But not everyone responds. But I want to I focus in on those two elements that, 
that precede the chain of events in Ephesians chapter 1. And that is, some, first, someone needs to preach in order for people to hear the gospel. Brothers, sisters, if we want our friends, if we want our neighbors, if we want our family members to respond to Christ in salvation, someone needs to preach to them. Someone needs to preach to them. Uh, and, you know, we can go through our lives and we can pray for our unbelieving neighbors and friends and loved ones, which is good and it's important for us to pray for them. Um, we can pray that God would send someone to preach to them, and that would be great. Because, of course, that's prior to preaching comes sending. Uh, pray that God would send someone to preach to them, and that's important. But I want you to think about and ask the question, what if God is sending you to preach to them? Well, Pastor House, I, I'm, not, I'm not trained to be a preacher. Well, I'm not asking you whether you're trained. I'm asking whether God is sending you. If God is sending you to preach to them, then you ought to get trained, right? You ought to get trained. Um, what does it mean to train to preach the gospel? It's not as complicated as you might think. Um, I've received a great deal of training because I preach professionally. That's what I do uh, you know, every day. It's, it's the gift that God has given me to preach, and I am utilizing it to the best of my ability. But whether you have the gift of preaching or not, I believe God has called you to preach. God has called you to testify to others about what Christ has done in your life. And God has uh, called you to issue the call to salvation, to simply ask people, do you want to know Jesus as your Savior and Lord? Do you want to give your life to Christ? Um, if we don't preach to them, who will? If we don't preach to them, who will? God sends preachers out to preach to our loved ones. What if God is sending you? It's a key thing and a key question we need to keep asking ourselves. To ask ourselves today, God, are you sending me to preach to anyone today? Um, but then to ask the question again tomorrow, right? Not to let that one answer for the one day be our answer for the rest of our lives. God, are you calling me to preach to this person today? Are you calling me to preach to them tomorrow? I believe that there are many people who will respond to the gospel of Jesus Christ if the gospel is preached to them. If they hear the gospel, they will respond. But they need to be preached to. And I want to just say this formally. I am sending you, as best I can as a pastor, I'm sending you out to preach. Um, if you'd like to be more equipped, come talk to me. Let's talk about what it means to preach the gospel to our friends. Um, but I want you to listen, not to my voice, but to the Lord's voice and ask, Lord, are you sending me to preach? Uh, me and myself as a, as a pastor and myself as a Christian, I believe God has called all of us to preach. So um, I think that's that all of us have uh, opportunities to share the gospel with our friends. So from my under best understanding, God is calling all of us to go into the, to the field and to preach to those who we know. Um, but, um, but you should be asking the question day by day, is this my moment? Is this the moment that God is calling me to preach? How are people saved? They're saved when, they, when someone is sent to preach the gospel. That person preaches the gospel. The, the listener hears the gospel. They are called to salvation. They believe. They're sealed by the promised Holy Spirit. And their lives are transformed by him. This is the chain of events that leads to someone coming to Christ. And you can be part of that chain of events if, if you say yes to Jesus when he calls you to preach. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for your love for us. Thank you that in your love for us, you sent someone to preach to us. God, I pray that you would help us to know who are you sending us to preach to ourselves. Lord, if we may feel unworthy, we may feel like we're unready, but I pray that you would put the words in our mouth and help us to, with love in our hearts to preach the good news to our friends and family and neighbors and loved ones. Lord, that we might see people come to know Jesus uh, through salvation. Lord, I pray that you would bless everyone in the sound of my voice. May they hear your voice and do your will. Or I lift up the Unterborgs uh, as they're continuing their anniversary celebration today. Please bless them and encourage them in every way. May they know that they are loved by you and by your church. And 
and uh, may they have a wonderful time on their anniversary trip today. And Lord, I pray for the elder board meeting tonight by Zoom, that you would bless it. Help us as we work through final details before the annual meeting and, uh, and work through other things that are coming on our plate. Lord, we love you and we trust you and we give ourselves to you in Jesus' name. Well, thank you, New Beginnings, for joining me for this daily update and devotional video. I love you, and I look forward to talking to you again tomorrow.